The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Hi, I'm Jason Bryant from the Short Time Wrestling Podcast and founder of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned and operated, and those opinions presented and expressed may not reflect others, the sponsors, patrons, or the parent network. Find more shows about the greatest sport in the world at the Matt Talk Podcast Network at matttalkonline.com. The mind of Pat Popolizio is a wondrous thing. And for you Pack Wrestling fans, you'll get to go inside the mind of the skip each and every episode here on the Pack Mentality Pop-Ins Podcast. Now, here's your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Ryan Reinhardt. All right, Wolfpack Wrestling fans, we're back in full effect. The season has started. We are at episode number 73 of the Pack Mentality Pop-Ins Podcast. I'm your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Brian Reinhardt. And perched in his office, we have the head coach of your Wolfpack, Pat Pablizio. Pat, hello. Brian, always great to see you. And uh, did you say 73? Episode number 73. Well, that means we've got together 73 on, times? No. Episode 73 for me, right, maybe yeah. 40-ish for you. Yeah, right. But welcome back to the podcast. Season started. Got that little adversity, little bus trip out of the way. We're about to come home, have the first home duel in Reynolds this Friday night against Appalachian State. I know you've been asked 20,000 times. I've asked you about your RTC guys, but what about college guys? You took a bus load to Boiling Springs, Gardner Webb. How was it to get this season started? Felt great. Um, long time coming. You know, with the delay of the start of the season and all the protocols that go into uh, training and competing, it just felt great to not have to worry about anything when the competition started to just go out there and let guys do what they are training to do, you know, and that was the best part about it. It was uh, refreshing to see that. And then also not just us, but around the country to start seeing some teams competing. So, no, that was definitely a win for our sport right now. And uh, we talk about, you know, there's a lot of protocols set forth by NC State, obviously, to get these athletes back on the mat. What do the guys go through right now during the season in regards to some of these protocols? Well, I think it's like a lot of places uh, where you're getting your temperature checked daily when you come into the building. There's uh, three tests a week, um, and they it's not just testing. It has to be the right time, um, and that's before competition and after competition. So we meet that window, and, and obviously uh, our sports med has done a phenomenal job here managing all that and just really helping us put the focus on coaching and getting our guys ready. And, you know, everyone's got to do their part right now. Um, even our guys, our coaching staff, it's just not the same when you can wake up, get on a bus and leave. I mean, everything's mapped out from who their training partners are to where they're sitting on the bus to who they're rooming with, what time the meals are going to be there. So, it, it, you know, that was a good part about going on the road um, to Gardner Webb is we, we got to do all that and have a system down now. And, you know, it's going to be a short, explosive season. So we got a couple of dates we got to get on the road. But we, we know what we're doing a little more now than, than we did last week. And the season's going to be unique. We talked about no tournaments, all duels. But after these duels and sometimes even during these duels, there's going to be a lot of extra matches going on. Uh, fluid situation, you guys as coaches are really going to have to map out what you guys are wrestling even the next day. What do you think about it? Did you like having more guys with you? It felt more as a whole team that went to Gardner-Webb instead of just your 10 starters. Yeah, it's different. Um, you know, usually your 10 guys are more experienced and uh, have been around a little bit. You you obviously throw a younger guy in there here and there, and, and it's easy to manage them. But, you know, we, we decided to take a lot of our freshmen with us so we can get them the experience of what we go through on the road, and I think that is extremely valuable. You know, if we were in a normal season, we're heading there and those guys are getting in the car, driving to an open tournament on their own. We're not managing what they're eating, what their warm-up looks like. Um, so the, the positive to that is that we got a year to, to really show these guys what we're looking for uh, when it comes to real tough competition. And uh, traveling with us, you know, they got to experience that and we got to see them wrestle. As we say, traveling with you guys isn't easy. 
couple hit the struggle bus. Uh, are you saying lack of food that you don't personally eat? I wasn't invited on we this trip. We don't miss a meal but I just ever assume on the road, just so you know. That you just don't like the fact we eat changed. real healthy on the road. I do. I like a good piece of prime rib. Would it kill you guys to have a carving station at the hotel? <laughs> um, all right, Gardner Webb. So you guys opened up uh, 42 nothing shutout, got most of your starters. A couple guys were out of the lineup. Then you got a lot of matches afterwards with a lot of your freshmen, a lot of your backups. Again, outstanding efforts. I think overall, maybe 24 and two on the day. How do you assess first weekend back, first time these guys were up against somebody rather than their training partner? Yeah, it looked good. There was a lot of positives to focus in on. Um, I, I felt our conditioning was was pretty good, and and you know, and I say that because we're we were constantly attacking, trying to put points up on the board, um, and hustling back to the middle. Things that we've been working on in the room, um, and it is nice to wrestle outside competition because we have not done that in uh, a while. Obviously, we got to go up to state college; it was a little different wrestling freestyle so no that was good i think um you know the areas that we've been focusing in on in the room showed out there in those competitions and, and like i told the guys i want to make sure we keep improving and, and doing those same things week to week as we get into acc competition you talk about what you guys are going in the room i stopped by practice this morning I saw you kind of brought back something maybe you haven't done for a couple of years guys weren't too happy that it was brought back are you talking about our training? I am talking about the training. I am. Uh, this is a great year to really train hard and uh, make improvements. So our our young guys are learning the difference between high school training and college training and what it takes to be elite. And uh, they've responded very well. Um, that was one thing we, were, we are focused in on is making sure we have a very good, positive attitude here at NC State and uh, guys who want to compete to win a national title. And we make no exceptions for anybody that doesn't meet that standard here. And that's been uh, that's been a good transition for these guys. I think a lot of these guys, not just here, but I think freshmen in general have success in high school because it's a little easier to uh, hide behind competition. You know, usually you get one match every couple weeks, you'll get a decent match or you go to a tournament and you can coast through the first couple rounds. But that's not the case in college. So our young guys are learning what it takes to uh, work hard and uh, be ready to wrestle against high-level competition. A lot of post-practice cardio, I noticed. Yes. Did not are. see a single staff or coach member jump in line, though. I will make – anytime you want to get a workout in with me, let me know. We usually get it in after practice or before. I, say, we talk to us. I am not a tre- – I'm a treadmill person. Okay, I got I'm one. A, I'm not Back a stepper. Back in my house, I got, we got the stepper and treadmill right next to each other so we could set the clock. I turn the heater on, though, and try to get it up to 80. So if that's a little too hot for you, let me know. I've actually been wearing a sweatshirt at the gym lately. I noticed. I, I feel you slimmed like down. Look good. Healthy. I'm, I'm trying to lose a couple pounds here. Must be a new year or here. something here. I tell you, getting in wrestling shape. Uh, so I guess I just kind of – let's run through the lineup a little bit this year, get some of your thoughts. Um, we always start at the lower weights, 125. Camacho, returning ACC champion. He really grew in the – off. actually, during the season, won that ACC title – a little bit of freestyle action now. Camacho is looking really strong, but very high expectations this year. He has that target on his back. Yeah, he's improved tremendously. Uh, I think the biggest thing with him was the struggle with, you know, same stuff we're dealing with our freshmen. You go through that that little transition period, you think you know everything and you're ready to go, and reality is, you know, you encounter some losses that you didn't think you'd ever hit. And uh, that happened to him last year. And I think his, you know, his turning point was after the scuffle. He hit a low and it was like, hey, what do you want to do about this? You want to sit here and pout and feel sorry for yourself? Or do you want to kind of get some things figured out mentally and physically? Um, And since then, he's hit the ground running. He studies the sport. He's got a great attitude, super athletic, super technical. um, And he is, you know, his goal is to win a national title. And he's got all the ability in the world to do that. And I think he's put himself in position for the near future to make that happen. And he's just got to keep working and know, you know, like you said, there is a target on his back this year. And guys are going to definitely game plan for him. And he's got to get better at knowing guys are going to try to shut certain things down. He's a pretty offensive wrestler. So he's. I think that's going to be the next level for him is how do you make those match adjustments, you know, after the first period and and feel a couple things. And I think you're going to see that out of him this year. And for those that listen to our podcast on a regular basis, they would be worried if I didn't take a quick timeout and plug some of our current NC State wrestling content. 
Of course, you can continue to listen to each and every new episode of the Pack Mentality Poppins podcast by subscribing and downloading it on your favorite podcasting platform. Just search hashtag Pack Mentality and you will get each and every new episode throughout the upcoming season. Please follow us on Twitter. We are at Pack Wrestle for all the latest information on the NC State wrestling team as we head into this new season. We're also on Instagram at Wolfpack Wrestling, and there you can get a behind the scenes look at the Wolfpack Wrestling program. And finally, a new venture we have just started is the Wolfpack Wrestling Club is now on Rockfin. You can subscribe to the Wolfpack RTC's Rockfin channel at Rockfin. Dot com slash Wolfpack WC and get all the latest content from the many events our current RTC guys participate in. As always, thank you for following along with us. There are no better fans than Wolfpack wrestling fans. I mentioned Appalachian State this Friday night, Reynolds Coliseum. Uh, Camacho is going to have a great matchup. Guy you're familiar with, started his career here. Cody Russell uh, is ranked number 23 in flow this week. A former two-time NCAA qualifier up at 133. He's making the cut down to 125. This is going to be a great matchup if you guys start at 125. Yeah, uh, definitely. He's a kid that has really good experience, uh, shown that he's won at the college level, dropped down a weight, so you know he's going to be a uh, good size for that. And it is. It's you know. That's why we're wrestling a team like App State. They got a lot of good individuals on their team. Those guys wrestle hard. They're well coached, and uh, we need that match to get us ready for what we're going to see all year. And uh, he can't take any opponent lightly, um, as we have limited competition. So, you know, I think he knows what he's got to do, and uh, that's a good match. That's probably one of those matchups as you look across the board. That that's going to be one of the action-packed matches right there. I have a few I wrote down, so we'll talk about them all. I like I get to scout the other team now. It's kind of fun. Uh, NC State going back to our your squad one thirty three. Uh, Trombley returns NCAA qualifier. He was a redshirt freshman. There's some competition now in that mat room at one thirty three. Just talk about how that weight class is going to move forward here. Yeah, we've got a lot of good depth there. Um, what I like most is Trombley's up this game tremendously. He looks extremely focused. Uh, his skill set has improved tremendously, and part of that is his mentality. He's very aggressive, very hard-nosed, tough, in shape, uh, smart. He's a, He's got a lot of good tools in his favor, um, and we just got to keep getting him the competition that he needs. He needs to get his hands on some high-level guys right now to, to see where he's really at, and I think he's going to – be one of those guys come at the end of the year. He's going to be in position to accomplish his goals this year. And uh, we do. We got a lot of good guys right now with uh, Alex Jaquiza, um Came down from 141. And you got Ryan Jack, you know, obviously one of the more talented guys coming out of high school last year. So we got some really good depth there. And we got to let things play out a little bit here. Um, get everyone a chance to get their feet on the ground, making weight, getting down there for the first time in a while. And uh, we're going to see the where things play out here uh, week to week. 141, Tariq Wilson. Obviously, he's been in your lineup every year. He's been here. Second year up at 141. And it was interesting. He went up to Penn State. He lost his bout. But I think you saw a lot of confidence he brought back. And now Tariq said he's going to shoot constantly this year. Start out with the tech fall. High expectations for Tariq as he's around number 10 in the country right now, and he wants that All-American season once again. Yeah, I think it's one of those. um, It's time for him to win a national title. I think that's the mentality he's got to have. Anything less, you know, he's done that already. So let's do better, Um, and that's a tall task. I think we all know that. He knows that. But I I, I do know he has all the ability and skill set to do it, and uh, I think he's really focused in now on the other side of things, mentally being ready to compete seven minutes, and that's something um, he's working really hard at right now, and that's why he said you know, he's going to constantly attack. I know when we went up to Penn State, that's what he did. I know against last weekend he went out and scored as many points as he could as fast as he can, and and that's what you're going to see out of him this year. Um, And that's what makes him great is if he does that, he's going to be very good and very difficult for anybody to wrestle this year with his skill set. And um, I think his length is a lot of trouble for guys and being really good on top. 149, uh, everybody was excited to see these in the wrestle-offs. Matt Grippy, A.G. Lighton, they've gone at each other the last couple of years. And now you brought in another newcomer, Ed Scott. Probably 
we were looking at him more at 157, but now since everybody's a free year, he's made the cut down to 149. He was in your lineup at Gardner Webb, scored a pin. So a lot of depth at 149 again, and a newcomer has really energized that group. Yeah, um, that was one of the weights. You know, we had good guys right there with AJ and Grippy, um, but really was looking for somebody to come in here and step up the competition level. And I think that's what you saw at Ed Scott. You know, there's a reason why he won the way he did in high school. And what I love about him is he had a lot of falls in high school, so he's exciting to watch. He constantly is attacking. Uh, just tough, hard nose in your face and, and big move kind of guy. So it's good. It's it's a nice upgrade there. But I also know those guys are, are fighting to, to get their, their spot back, too. And the competition brings out the best of us. Um, so we got, you know, this is a year we're going to need good depth. And we got it if needed. But I do like the level we're at with Ed. And I think you're going to see week to week him constantly improve Um on the flip side of that, there's not a whole lot of time to, to get that experience that he needs. So he's got to be ready to go. Um, and, and training in our room has helped him tremendously with that. But the next you know, next few months is going to be exciting for Ed Scott. He's, you're going to see a lot of uh, good wrestling out of him. And it's going to be very exciting. Appalachian State, Friday night, Rounds Coliseum. Ed Scott, 149. Appalachian State has the number 10 wrestler in the country coming in, Jonathan Milner. You guys are very familiar with him. A lot of NC State battles. So if Ed's out there on the mat, he's going to get a top 10 foe in his second college match. How exciting are you to see him out there against that level of competition so early in his career? It's great. Um, you want to make a name for yourself. you got to go out there and beat the best guys in the country, and there's no doubt about it. You know, this kid has proven that. He's uh, beaten all our guys in the years past. He's tough, hard-nosed, wrestles really hard. Um, and that's what we want. We want to compete against that and see what we need to work on and, and what we're already good at. And uh, we're going to get a chance to do that uh, Friday night, and that is definitely one of the matches I think people are going to want to watch because I know both those guys wrestle really hard and score points. Um, that's not going to be one of those that just – sit there and, and wait to the very end. So um, that's going to be, I think, the highlight match of one of those highlight matches uh, come Friday night. 157. Uh, I had Earl Smith at the Open Mat on last week. I don't know if you listened to the previous podcast, but he was talking about preseason rankings. And I always say, I'm not sure what to say about Hayden anymore. Starts the season number two in every single poll. Obviously, his goal, just like all your guys, but national championship Hayden's really come on strong here, freestyle. How has his offseason benefited him towards this upcoming year? I think it was really good. He got a chance to really train with our upper-level guys in the RTC. That's helped him tremendously. His focus, his discipline, everything he needs to do to win a national title is in play. Um, and he's just got to go out there and, and stay focused and do that. Um, the, the flip side of that is we don't get to – wrestle a ton of matches this year and, and see a, a variety of competition. But the good news is he was able to do that in freestyle and got a lot of good wins over some very high-level guys and uh, wrestled through different positions and improved his offense a lot. And uh, I think, you know, it's time for him to, to take his national title and, and, and go get it. Um, that's what he set out to do. I know every day he wakes up, that's what he's training for. So um, I just want get through these two months here and, and get them in position to, to win that title. A couple stars I'm going to group together. They both missed the Gardner-Webb duel, but should be returning here shortly. 165, you have Thomas Bullard. 184, Trent Hidley. Um, Bullard, he sits, he sits about in the top eight in every poll. Trent, he sits in the top five, if not the top three of every poll. Very high expectations of those two, but they both missed Gardner-Webb. Are they coming along? What do you think about their progression here? Yeah, um, both those guys, obviously, I'm going to call them seeding right now this year instead of rankings because that's what uh, it looks like with a short year where these guys might be seeded. Um, so I think I'll keep saying rankings. Yeah, I'll keep saying seeding because okay. the rankings mean nothing as long as it's uh, – I, I can make my own rankings out too. Um those guys are, are set out. Uh, obviously, Bullard has improved a lot and uh, is going to give you a 110% fight no matter when he's wrestling or who he's wrestling. Um, and he's he's improved that. And I think as you get a little older in college and you're a guy that's really good on the mat, makes you even more dangerous. So you're going to see that out of Thomas. 
Uh, Trent, as we all know and we've all watched, his offense has opened up a lot, and uh, I think that's going to make him very dangerous this year. Uh, a little setback with his having his appendix removed, so we'll have him back here in a couple weeks. Um, definitely not this week we'll be wrestling, but I, I would expect him to be back uh, for ACC's uh, competition. Um, we'll take it week to week. If we need him, we'll wrestle him. If not, you know, obviously doctors and trainers have say in that. And then uh, Bullard, I expect to wrestle Friday night. Um, I don't know about Saturday back-to-back, but uh, definitely want to get him in the duel for Friday night. Um, We could have used him if we needed it against uh, Gardner-Webb last week, but I just felt it was better to rest him one more week and uh, get the experience for a young guy in a competition like that. 174. The other Bullard, now married, Daniel Bullard, he's in the top 10 in every ranking, and he came out. Got that major decision at Gardner Webb. Both Bullards, and I think especially Dan will tell you, they're trying to work on their neutral game this year a lot more. How do you think Daniel did in the offseason? I thought those guys have done a great job working and keep developing their offense. Um, we know they're really good on the mat, and we know when they want to score, you know, they've got to keep making their adjustments. And uh, our coaching staff's done a really good job. And, you know, when you have the experience those guys do, it comes down to just executing it and uh, listening to what is being said to you. And those guys got to keep listening. And uh, I think you're going to see some big things out of those guys. But they've been key players to when you look at NC State and the results and where we've come from. Those guys have been a huge part of that to, to help us get where we need to be right now. Another feature matchup against Appalachian State this Friday night at 174. As I said, Bullard ranked number 10. His opponent, Thomas Flitz, number 17 right now in the polls or the whatever you said, seedings. Um, NCAA qualifier. These two, three matches last year, two to one in favor of Bullard, but they were all basically one takedown matches between each of them. Could have swung either way in the third. This is going to be a great matchup for fans to watch on Friday night. Definitely. Uh, those guys – pretty familiar with each other so uh, I'd like to see the improvements we've made and I'm sure you know those guys are looking to do the same so it's uh, that's what we wrestle for is to uh, test where we're at see the uh, adjustments that everyone's got to make and uh, we'll see where the seedings end up there Brian <laughs> 197 everybody always wants to know and watches his knee Nick Renan we've seen him a lot lately Penn State Gardner Webb Getting to his offense pretty good in both of those matches, getting some takedowns. Uh, Renan, he's had about a full year here to recover. How do you think he'll play out here? It's his second season at 197. It's the only time in his college career he's been at the same weight a second straight year, so that's got to be a benefit for him. Yeah, he's. uh, I think he's physically probably close to 100%. Mentally is the bigger challenge you have anytime you come back from a, an injury like that and you know I think he's a kid that has won a lot in his whole career and then you have a setback like that and it, it takes you off course a little bit and uh, he's been working really hard to physically and mentally get back to where he was and it's not easy for an athlete um, and I I think you're going to see that out of him we've been pushing him really hard and and He's been willing to listen and and push himself, and that's what you need to do right now. And I'm hoping, you know, last couple competitions have given him a lot of confidence in his health, um, which will carry over to the mental side of things for him. And once he starts clicking from all cylinders, we all know how good and dangerous he can be. But that's got to come from him. We have are putting him in position as a department, staff, medical, whatever it is we need to do on our end for him to have all the resources to win. And uh, he's responded very good to that. And it's time for him to take advantage of this and go out and finish, um, you know, where he was at is get right back there. Um, And the good news is where our conference is, he's going to have a lot of opportunities this year to do that. You know, in a shortened season, I'd say it's going to be hard to find that competition, but ACC at 197 has got a lot of really good competitive guys, so he's going to have a good chance. And um, if not him, you know, we have good options and good depth. You take Tyree, don't take him for granted. He was a returning starter who stepped up big for us at the end of the year last year. And uh, we talked a little bit about it in the past, but Isaac Trumbull is going to be a guy that's going to be dangerous to wrestle, being 6'4", has a gas tank that can wrestle really hard and, and 
is really tough on top. And I think in the upper weights, when you can ride and, and dangerous on top, you're going to be a threat to, to beat a lot of guys. So either way, 197 at NC State is going to be very competitive, very tough. I can tell you that. The other upper weight, heavyweight U, 285. There's been some great competition this offseason in that room. Uh, it's really improved over the years. Obviously, returning starter Deontay Wilson, uh, ACC runner-up last year, is sitting in the polls. But he's being pushed by a couple of guys behind him, too. So that's got to be good for you to see those heavyweights in there mixing it up every practice. Yes. Um, I think when you go back and you look where it all started from having Nick here and the training that – he's implemented into the RTC and then how that's carried over to mentorship and leadership with some of the heavyweights here. Um, it's helped tremendously. And at the end of the day, Deontay's earned that by his work ethic attitude and just the commitment that he's given to the sport. And he's improved tremendously. Um, he's super athletic for his size. His defense is very good and he can wrestle I don't know if he needed to. He could go 12, 15, 20 minutes. Um, but he's he's going to be a big threat this year because he's, he's, again, he can move very well on his feet. And then his top position is probably one of his better positions too. He can ride. And uh, you get a guy a little, little fatigued in a match, it's going to come out big and, and play in his favor. So I'm excited to see him get a chance to compete, um, including this, this Friday. I think that's a match a couple years back. Maybe I think he, he – it was a loss to this kid, maybe. So we're going to see the improvements he's made. Friday night, January 8th, NC State will host Appalachian State in Reynolds Coliseum. And unfortunately, uh, protocols are no fans will be admitted. We will allow student athlete guests. Um, have you, Pat, I've, I think I've asked you before, but have you talked to the guys about going into Reynolds, no crowd? I mean, it's, I know you guys practice in all kind of conditions and all that. How do you get the ment guys mentally there that they will not have that crowd cheering them on, edging them on in that third period? We just go back and watch film from year one here, and then we realize what it's going to be like. <laughs> no, wow. someone was joking about that. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, it's going to be eerie. It's different. Um, I think that's the biggest thing is – you know, when you got a crowd there, kind of it's loud, it's exciting, and guys do get amped up. Um, but then now you get in an arena like that, and it's still hectic because you got two teams screaming and coaches yelling. So there's still going to be that craziness going on, um, but it's not going to be muted out. So yeah, I don't. You know, I'm I'm thinking the Penn State event helped a lot. The uh, Gardner Webb just to get that feel and where we've been practicing in our in our room. Um, has helped us prepare for that. But we are 1,000% going to miss having Reynolds packed and the support that we've been given by, the, by our fan base because it has been a big, you know, the guys feel that energy. So that's been a big part of it. So now it's going to come down to who can uh, focus in and, and not let that affect anything. And I, I think we have enough experience and guys who have wrestled all over the country and some all over the world to not really care too much about that and know that there's still people behind them. And, you know, this is still one of the best venues and fan base in the country that you can wrestle in. So we got to know that people are still going to be watching and following. Even if fans cannot be in Reynolds, I uh, guarantee every time the Wolfpack is in Reynolds, you will be able to watch it. So Friday night, January 8th, Appalachian State at 7 o'clock will be ACC Network Extra. We'll be streaming it online so fans can watch. And, Pat, I talked about that duel Saturday. There's going to be a lot of competition as well as now teams are going to stay maybe an extra day to compete in some extra matches. What is the setup? What is your plan for Saturday to get even more matches for your guys? Yeah, I think we got to take advantage of the short season. And any time that we have a team coming in here and the competition – we got to utilize that. And, uh, you know, App State being in state, not too far away, they're going to bring over. I don't know the exact number yet, but our goal is to just, as a coaching staff, you sit down and you try and work everything out, you know, fit their needs, and hopefully they can fit our needs of what we need to uh, get experience for guys who uh, are going to need it that are a little younger and uh, up and coming. And maybe it's even some starters that need to come back and, and get extra matches. Um, it is good to have back-to-back weigh-ins. Um, that was part of it, too, because, you know, looking at the NCAA tournament, still don't know the logistics of what that's going to look like, but I would imagine it's definitely going to be a day or two of back-to-back weigh-ins. Um, 
and uh, this is only going to help us get better. And, you know, again, it, those extra matches are a little bit like practice. We're still working on some things, and it's it's not your own teammate that you're competing against, so it does give a guys a little more of a feel of what it's going to be like at the end of the year here. Pat, great breakdown. Again, fans, please tune in. ACC Network Extra Friday night, NC State, Appalachian State. Great chance to watch NC State Wrestling. Ara and Ryan Tice will probably be on the call. So always great knowledge of his NC State cur- previous career. Pat, thanks for catching us up. No notes. That was all on the fly. You actually showed up when I asked you to show up. We're off to a great start here in 2021. Yeah, and if you need to, I can send you the link to watch the duel online too, Brian. I'm hoping to get a seat. I actually have been emailing a few times today about where I'm going to sit, so I'm very curious. Stumped you. you. Gonna, no, I stumped you, you there. I was waiting for you to sign <laughs> off and say something nice to the fans. Well, tune in. Uh, luckily, we, we were able to get everything on network, so guys will have a chance to showcase their skills this Friday night. Looking forward to it. He's not the best PR guy in the business for anything, folks. That's Pat Pavlizio asking you to tune in. But I want to thank everybody for listening today. This is your Pack Mentality Poppins podcast covering all things NC State Wrestling. Until next time, Wolfpack Wrestling fans, go Pack! Mentality Poppins Podcast is produced by the Mad Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, go to madtalkonline.com.